Hi, I'm Sean Mandrake of AudioStorm, and I'd like to tell you all about our hotboxes. What sets them apart, what's good about them, and why you might want one. A hotbox is a power attenuator. You connect it between your amplifier output and your speaker, and it works by converting a large amount of that power, usually 90% or more, into heat. This allows you to turn your amp right up to 11, get that great overloading power valve tone, and not be deafened. Using a power attenuator is absolutely safe. The horror stories you hear about amplifiers cracking up and dying or even bursting into flame are always because of someone pulling an old amp out of a skip or an attic that hasn't been looked after and is already struggling to cope. These guys play them at home on one or two and they're okay, they're alive these amplifiers and of course as soon as you talk to 11, boom, it bursts into flame. Now this would have happened anyway. If they'd have taken it to a gig it would have happened but it just so happens they used a power attenuator to turn it up. So don't let these idiots put you off at all. As long as your amplifier is in good condition and you've looked after it, the tubes are okay, the bias is set, the usual maintenance tasks, you absolutely have no problem whatsoever using a power attenuator. Power attenuation isn't like tone tweaking, where every little adjustment makes an important difference. I mean, did you ever roll out your 50 watt amplifier and think, oh gosh, I wish it was 47 watts? No, of course you didn't. You tend to think more in terms of, I wish it was half the volume, or I wish it was double the volume. And as it turns out, those are really good, useful steps. Half and double, and that's what we should be looking at. But when we're working in watts, things don't work as we'd expect. Watts aren't linear. What that means is, if you want to halve the volume of a 100 watt amp, you need a 10 watt amp. Yeah, it's really crazy like that. That's why a 50 watt amp and a 100 watt amp are so close, so similar. So it turns out that minus 10 dB, which is 10 to 1 ratio or 90% reduction, is a really good sweet spot. It's enough reduction to be useful, but you get a lot of great tone, and that's why we build minus 10 dB into all our hotboxes as a default. Going a little further, down to minus 16 dB, you're still not losing any tone, it still sounds absolutely great, and we're getting to almost sort of bedroom levels at night, almost but not quite. We could go further. But what we tend to find is when you go a little bit further, you lose tone. So those two levels, that sort of minus 10 down to minus 15, minus 16, is a really good range. A lot of people want variable controls, but they're really not generally a good idea. Before we designed our units, we, we surveyed a whole load of different people, and, and they all said the same thing, which was that after a short while, they'd find a sweet spot, they'd stick with it, and they'd never change it. And guess what? Those sweet spots were always minus 10, or minus 15, minus 16 dB. Exactly where we build set our hotboxes. It's really hard to make a variable control that can safely handle a lot of power. The units that use these things tend to say, say, say stuff like 80 watts max, or you can use 100 watts if you turn down your amp. I mean, what? Why would you do that? What's the point of that? The whole point of owning a hotbox is to turn up your amp. It just defeats the object. You know, and then even if you do stick to those limits, our amps are notorious for putting out way more power than they say they will. I, I've measured plenty of amplifiers that put out double, so if you don't have headroom on it, this whole thing is going to end in disaster. First up, they're solid cast aluminium. This whole box is a really effective heatsink. We don't need fans or vents or gimmicks. They're really, really tough. You could reverse over one, there's no problem with that. And having no vents means they're splash resistant. They're gonna to tolerate accidental beer, sweat, rain, anything you throw at them. They're basically indestructible. We use British made aluminum clad resistors throughout. These things are the best. They're rugged, they're robust, and they sound great. And they're exactly what you want in a unit like this. Um, they are rather expensive though, they cost pounds each, as opposed to these ceramic coated resistors, which is what most of our competitors use and cost pence each. There's nothing wrong with these, these are better. We use point to point wiring inside our units and that's not a vanity call in this case. When you use components that heat up, they expand, the joints move. If you use circuit boards, they will eventually crack. And again, we've seen a lot of circuit boards in some of our competitors' products. It's not a good idea. Point to point throughout. Tone and signal path. 
What you get out reflects what you put in. There's nothing tacked onto that signal chain, and even the sockets in and out are Nutrix sockets. And then there's cost. Price performance ratio, bang for your buck. Ours is made with premium components to a much higher standard, and it costs less. You know, I'll leave that one up to you to decide. Thanks for listening.